Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video, welcome to my garage. So last week I got Ratchet out to the OHV park for the first time ever. Got to actually run him around uh, much more than just driving up and down the streets here. So that was technically my first shakedown run. So there's a couple things that I took away from the shakedown run and I wanna share those with you guys. So when I go through this list, some of these are things that I need to fix right away. Some of these are things that I'm thinking about and I might make changes, I might not. And then there's a couple things that there's really nothing I can do about, but I noticed that they're a little bit of a problem. So I'll just need to kind of change the way I do things to, to work around the situation. So one item that I ran into, which was a big one, and this needs to be changed, is my two switches here. This one is for the ignition. This one is for the fuel. And I put these where they're really, really easy to access, and I put these flips on them so that in an emergency, they can be shut down real easy. What I didn't take into account is that when, when the steering wheel is on here, <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't seem like it would be an issue, but when I was out there playing around and things are bumping around, uh, twice what I did is when my hand came down, it flipped the ignition off. That happened, to, <laughs> that happened twice, and that's actually a pretty serious issue. Like I definitely don't want the engine cutting off right before I'm going up a jump or if there's people behind me or anything like that. So I think what I'm going to do is probably change things up here, probably slide this over so it's right here. And then for these two switches, I still want them to be accessible, but I don't want to bump them. I'm probably going to make a piece under here that steps in. I'm probably going to mount those down there. But what I'm gonna do for the interim is I'm just gonna take off these flips so that it's just the switches. Because if it's just the switches, there'll be a much smaller chance that I'm gonna just accidentally flip them off. Another problem I had is the idle speed. When I've run it around the neighborhood streets here a little bit, it's kind of warmed up a little bit. It's gotten up to, I think, 170, maybe 175. But when I was actually at the OHV park and I was running around, I was reaching 190, I think I was at 195 a little bit. And at those higher temperatures, I've, I've always, my idle has always been a little bit low, but at 190, 195, what was happening is the hotter the engine got, the lower my idle was getting. And around 190, the idle was getting so low that sometimes if I was running around, if I push the clutch in, it was actually idling down, 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 and then it would stall. Uh, so, but that one I actually already fixed. The day after I got back from the OHV park, I plugged in the laptop and on the Infinity Tuner, there's a, uh, there's a setting in there that they use as like a, a scaling mechanism. This is specifically for the drive-by wire. They use it as a scaling mechanism and mine was set to 10%. And what I noticed is that what was happening is the infinity was giving me what it considered a hundred percent idle and it still wasn't maintaining, maintaining my idle set point. So what I did is I changed the scaler from 10% to 15% and then all of a sudden that opens up how much of the throttle body it enables it to use and then all of a sudden my idle came up and then I was no longer stuck at a hundred percent idle. It was, it was floating around in the middle. So that solved that. But at the OHV park, it was an issue. It's just, I already solved that. Next issue is my air filter. I knew that this wasn't gonna be my long-term air filter, but if you saw the previous video, when I was doing those donuts, it was so dusty, I couldn't even, I couldn't even believe it. I didn't realize that things were going to be that dusty. So I need to get this changed to something better immediately. Otherwise, that's going to cause some long-term damage to my engine. So I'm looking around for some, some centrifugal air filters or something that's meant for off-roading that'll uh, clean up the air much better for my, my little engine here. 
so the next issue was my parking brakes and this this isn't something that I'm going to be able to do anything about but this is something that I just need to learn to kind of facilitate but what would happen is every time I stopped I would set both of these parking brakes and they worked awesome when you set these things you don't even need a lot of brake pressure and they hold ratchet rock solid they're totally awesome so if I set both of these and put him in gear like he's not going anywhere which was awesome but what was happening is every time I would hop in him I would get in here and I would get all buckled in get my seat belt on ready to go start up the engine and then I would remember that I set the brakes and when I'm buckled in I can't reach those they're like they're just a little bit out of my reach and so I would have to unbuckle undo it and get out of here and if there was a way I could reach those that would be awesome that's why I originally had them set up here but obviously that having the brake lines run up here was too much of an air pocket so I'm not going to do anything to move them but I need to teach myself right before I buckle in to undo these and then strap in another thing I had going on and I this is one of those things I knew it was going to be a problem but I don't want it to one day ruin my day for such a such a stupid thing is right now the AE Infinity does not control my alternator once I fire the engine up and it's running I hit this it's, it says auxiliary but what it does is this grounds out the charging wire on my alternator and when I hit that then the alternator starts charging but I have to remember to hit this and I what I need to do is remove this and integrate that grounding wire into the infinity and have the infinity look at voltage and when the voltage gets low enough have the infinity then control the alternator and then it'll it'll ground it out when it's too low and then it'll unground it or have it stop charging when the voltage is up higher because at some point in time I'm going to forget to do this and my voltage is going to go down and the infinity will give me an alarm if the voltage gets too low but if I don't catch it in time it's going to run the infinity out of voltage which is very bad for the infinity so I need I need to get this integrated into the infinity another thing that was a nuisance is this I'm so used to just laying this on the passenger seat but when I was at the OHV park I kept taking people for rides and having passengers and so I couldn't put this on the seat and it wasn't convenient putting it up on the dash as you can see it doesn't really lay up there very well and I don't want it flipping any switches or anything so the steering wheel was a nuisance I need to put in some sort of a steering wheel hanger like the drag racer guys have so that when I'm getting in getting out I can just hang this and not have to worry about it that's not a big thing but it was it was certainly a pain in the butt at the park so when I was at the park and I wasn't driving I'd just be hanging out by the trailer sometimes somebody would come up and ask a bunch of questions about Ratchet. Obviously, that's going to happen. He's a, he's a custom vehicle. And I would tell them all about it, because obviously I enjoy doing that. What happened more than once, and I didn't think this, I never even thought about this. What would happen is, they would be over here looking at it, and they would, for some reason, everybody wanted to lean right here. Everybody wanted to lean right here. I don't really know why, but everybody walks up and wants to lean right here. And this quarter panel is really thin. You can see it doesn't have a lot of strength. I never intended to or expected people to lean on here. So what would happen is I'd be, you know, hanging out talking to people and they'd come up and they'd lean on this and you can hear the fiberglass like you know it's the fiberglass is like oh I'm not meant to hold up a dude uh, so I need to either reinforce this 
or put some foam behind it or something. I'll probably just add like three layers of some fiberglass mat back there just, just to beef it up so that if somebody leans on it, it's not going to deflect so much. And then if you watched my other video, you saw that I had made some suspension supports that go in here and then in order to get ratchet on the trailer, I jack his rear end up all the way and then I put supports in there so that I can take the jack out and the supports hold it so that the suspension sits up at full droop in the rear and that, because these are, this is uh, H-arms in the rear, when it's at full droop it actually draws the tires in a little bit. Well the supports that I had made, for some reason they survived the whole trip out there but then when I was loading him up onto the trailer, the supports buckled. I'm not sure why. I don't know how they made it out there. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. They made it out there fine. But then going up onto the trailer, they buckled. And so I had to get creative with straps to draw the tires in so that I could get him home. So when I came home, I made these. These are like probably three times stronger than the ones that were in there. So... Uh, this is one item that I already had to do because I can't get them on the trailer until I had remade these. Then another issue I had is, like, like I said, I gave several people a ride and before somebody gets in, I kind of, kind of show them, you know, how I where, I, where I step, where I put my hands and everything that I do to get in here. I kind of show them how I do it. But people have people kept wanting to to grab the roof like this and number one if they do that they'll crack this lip off number two if they do that they're gonna get some fiberglass fibers in their hand and obviously I don't want this breaking and I also don't want people getting fiberglass in their hands so initially I thought maybe I would just make this lip a lot smaller and I'll probably do that initially, but I'd, I'm not exactly sure what to do with that. One of the reasons I have this light bar here is when I get in or out, this is what I use as a handle. This is my handle, but you know, other people don't know that. As a matter of fact, they might, they might even look at this and think, oh, I'm not supposed to grab that, but that's the reason that I put that bar there. I also, that's another reason that I put this here, is this gives you somewhere strong to grab if you're if you're pushing ratchet back or if to help sling yourself in but anyways it was I noticed that people wanted to grab like this so I gotta see if I can come up with some ideas so that that's not so enticing for people to do another issue I noticed when I was uh, some of the video I used was from this camera back here and it was showing you could see this in the last video that while I'm driving these wingtips they just flutter around like crazy so I think what I'm gonna do is actually just actually draw them in a little bit and I'm just gonna make a bolt point where they bolt onto the the frame here to hold them solid and I also kinda like I kinda like how it draws them in a little bit and it gives me a little bit more room when I'm walking in here, so uh, I need to do that because in the video, you, it looks like it is probably is possibly going to just shake itself off before too long. So that's it for the takeaways. The next time I'm out there, which hopefully will be next week or the week after, I'm going to hit the track in the middle pretty hard. So there'll be a lot more. Like on that outing, I'll be making some adjustments to the suspension and possibly playing with the engine a little bit but on this shakedown if I don't know if that sounds like a lot of things that I found that needed some attention but all in all I don't think it's a lot of things it was actually a really good trip the engine aside from that idling issue ran really well the suspension was good I didn't push it real hard but the suspension was really good the engine sounded really good I'll definitely try to capture some of that on the next outing it, I think I think the engine sounded really good. Like I was, I was psyched in that, in the chassis there when I would be 
just accelerating. It just, it sounded really, really good. And I, this engine probably has around 220 horsepower, which isn't a lot, but man, it felt good. It felt like I was, I was really happy with the power. I'm going to want more and I'll, I'm expecting to play with a turbo on this, but for now, I'm really happy with it. It was pulling good. You saw it did it did donuts, and once it's once it's going on the donuts, it's just it's in second gear, and it's just it's spinning the back tires like nothing. You can throttle up, throttle down. It's just it's just spinning the back tires, no problem. And if you look in the video, you can see it's it's really squatting. It's got all the weight on the rear end. The front end is is practically at full droop, and it's just. It's just ripping those tires loose like nothing, which was which was fun, and I'm looking forward to getting better at doing the donuts and all that stuff. That was <laughs> that was really exciting. I, I don't know why, but it's like driving a full size radio controlled car, you know. So, anyways, it was it was a really successful trip, and uh, I'll I'll change some of these little things before the next trip, and then on the next trip I can lean a little harder on the suspension and on the engine. Like I want to play around with the rev limiter so I, I can uh, be a little bit more crazy with just high RPMs and stuff like that. But uh, all in all, I just wanted to share the takeaways from the shakedown because uh, you know you don't usually hear people talk about the bad parts of their builds and stuff like that. So I wanted to share it with you guys and that's it. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it's helping you with whatever you're working on and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.